So, NASA is telling scientists to look at Venus again. This comes after a discovery hinting at possible life there. Back in the 60s, NASA docs show they weren't fans of Venus, calling it a planetary inferno. Mars became the cool kid for space missions. During the space race, the Soviets put a ton of cash into sending spacecraft to Venus, even though it sucked and didn't seem like it could support life. They stuck with their Vanera program until the USSR fell apart. Thanks to folks like Neil deGrasse Tyson, we get why. We will check out newly available Soviet images of Venus. When the USSR broke up, it wasn't just about politics, a lot of secrets went with it. The Soviets were super secretive, from their spy agency to hiding alien stuff. Before the US took the lead in space, the Soviets had the early edge. They mostly focused on Venus, a planet that's basically space hell. Russians call Venus Venera, which is why their missions had that name, running from 1961 to 1983. While the U.S. was landing on the moon, the Soviets went for Venus. Maybe they thought they could use Venus as a military base or wanted to colonize it after finding aliens. Since this was during the Cold War, the USSR was hush-hush about their Venus goals. Now, we only know stuff from files that have been declassified, but there are still a lot of questions. What were the Soviets looking for, and did they find anything big on Venus? They didn't just try a few times. The USSR launched 28 missions to Venus, 13 made it into the atmosphere, and 8 landed. This gave them an edge in space research. NASA was working on other stuff like satellites. Mars only got their attention later. The Soviet space program was the first to send a probe into another planet's atmosphere. They also had other firsts like a soft landing and getting images and audio from the surface. It's like the U.S. moon landing, but these Soviet missions don't get much love. This is mainly because the USSR was so secretive. When the Soviet Union ended in 1992, the space agency was taken apart and put back together as Rose Cosmos. A lot of Van Era program records were lost or trashed, so we don't really know why they were so into Venus. One guess is that it was cheaper. They weren't necessarily thinking about life there, but checking things like water, radiation, and geology. Without their data, we wouldn't know how crazy hot and dense Venus is today. Most astronomers think Venus is way too rough for life. The surface can melt lead, there's barely any water, and the pressure is intense. But we know this now. Ignoring the USSR's Venus research is like rewriting history. The Soviets always thought Venus was worth it, even if it was just to win the space race. Mars seemed good for life, but it would have cost more to get there. Venus is closer to Earth, about 40 million kilometers, compared to Mars at 250 million. This made missions cheaper, important for a country that didn't have the U.S.'s money. Soviet missions had issues. Spacecraft had design flaws and communication problems. That's why they went for Venus closer and more likely to get results. Not talking about the space race leaves out a big part of the Van Era story. The USSR launched Sputnik 1 in 1957, the first satellite which started the race. NASA focused on the moon, and the Soviets went for Venus. NASA failed a lot at first. They were stuck in the Venus curse, losing probes in the atmosphere. The USSR took this chance to dominate Venus exploration, since both countries wanted to win the race. The U.S. took the moon and the Soviets took Venus. The USSR's Venus missions were a direct shot at outdoing the U.S. in space. Even with their problems, they sent more missions to Venus than anyone else. NASA downplayed Venus, calling it a wasteland, and pushed Mars as the future. The Soviets didn't care about public opinion, they just wanted to show they were the best. The Van Era program was advanced and ambitious, could be seen as the start of the modern space age. In the 50s, Soviet engineers started building early probe designs. They improved them over 30 years and sent a bunch of spacecraft to Venus, often under pressure. Early on, the USSR could launch heavier stuff. This meant they could build spacecraft that could handle space travel. Soviet scientists were also working on math models to figure out flight paths for landings. They were working on Mars missions too, but Venus was the main goal. One big win was Van Era 3 in 1966, the first human-made thing to reach Venus. U.S. missions often failed, but the USSR's program kept getting better, even with issues. They kept sending probes that made it into the atmosphere and sometimes landed. 
One problem was the size of their spacecraft, but they fixed that, especially in the 70s when they started using advanced models. They even did dual launches with Vanera 4 and 5. The 70s were the best time for planetary science. NASA tried to copy these launches, but the USSR had already nailed it. The point of dual spacecraft was to get better data. By launching similar probes with different upgrades, the Soviets wanted to gather layered data. Vanera 4 checked out the planet and entered the atmosphere. Vanera 5 followed with special upgrades to collect more details. These probes could handle Venus heat, pressure, and radiation. By the mid-70s, the program was next level. They improved everything, from insulation to communication. Every success brought the USSR closer to understanding Venus. Vanera 7 was a big one. It sent data from the surface of another planet. The Soviets had already learned about the planet's conditions, and now they were recording audio. In the 80s, the Vanera program was at its peak. Vanera 13 took the first color photos of Venus. Vanera 14 also collected data. Now, Roscosmos, Russia's space agency, is interested in Venus again. They're planning a mission with NASA called Vanera D, set to launch in the late 2020s or early 2030s. They'll use new tech to check out the atmosphere and geology, looking for signs of life. The mission will include an orbiter, a lander, and maybe an aerial probe to study the clouds. The Vanera missions are more than just science or politics. Started during the Cold War, they show what humans can do and our need to learn. Even with problems, Soviet scientists kept going. Their use of robots for studying the climate and land set the stage for planetary science. They learned about Venus climate including the pressure, heat, and atmosphere of carbon dioxide and sulfuric acid. Tech from this time also helped other space missions. They made breakthroughs in heat shields, communication, and landing that helped missions to Mars and beyond. The missions were also about politics. Each launch showed off tech and competition. When Vanera 7 landed in 1970 and sent data, it showed that the USSR could handle tough environments. The probes had cameras that took the first close-up pictures of Venus, showing rocky landscapes that helped scientists learn about the planet's geology. Later missions added to our understanding of Venus. The Vanera program had problems. Missions failed or had system errors. The harsh conditions, like heat above 450 degrees Celsius and sulfuric acid, made it hard for spacecraft to last. Still, Soviet scientists kept going. NASA is planning new Venus missions like the proposed Vityaz mission in partnership with Roscosmos. Building on Vanera's achievements, Vityaz wants to explore Venus further, looking at its atmosphere, geology, and potential for life. As we look forward, leaving out the space race makes the Vanera mission story make no sense. The USSR launched Sputnik 1 in 1957, which was the first satellite and started the competition. So, NASA worked on the moon and the Soviets worked on Venus. NASA's early tries at exploring Venus kept failing. The American agency got stuck in what people called the Venus curse. Probes were lost or broke down as soon as they hit Venus's atmosphere. The USSR saw this as a chance to put even more effort into bossing Venus exploration, especially since both countries were desperate to win the space race. So they split the work. The US took the moon and the Soviets took Venus. The USSR's constant focus on Venus was a way to outshine the US in space work. Despite not having as much money or an easy time bureaucracy-wise, the Soviet Union sent more missions to Venus than anyone else. NASA's PR move was to downplay Venus, calling it a wasteland, and push Mars as the place for the future. This message was spread through the media, where Venus was made out to be bad and Mars was made out to be good. But for the Soviets, it wasn't about what people thought. It was about proving they were better. The Vanera program, even though people have basically forgotten it, was super advanced. If any project started the modern space scene, it was these missions. Back in the 50s, Soviet engineers started building and testing probe designs. Over the next 30 years, they improved their models and sent a bunch of spacecraft to Venus, often dealing with big political stress. Despite all this, the USSR had some initial advantages, like a better ability to carry weight. This meant the Soviets could build and launch heavier spacecraft that could handle tough space travel. 
The Soviet science community was also working on math models to figure out the exact flight paths and gravitational pulls needed for good landings. Their Mars missions were making progress, too. One of their big victories was the 1966 launch of Vanera 3, which was the first thing made by humans to reach Venus and touch its surface. While U.S. missions often failed, the USSR's program kept getting better, despite issues. The Soviets kept sending probes that got into Venus's thick atmosphere and sometimes landed. One ongoing issue was that their spacecraft were small and not that well designed, but these problems were solved. By the 1970s, the USSR was sending its best Vanera models. They even did the first dual launches with Vanera 4 and Vanera 5. Many historians say this time was the best time for planetary science. NASA tried to copy these tricky launches, but the USSR had already figured it out. The reason for launching two spacecraft was to get better data. By launching two similar probes, the Soviets wanted to gather data from multiple layers of the atmosphere and surface. Vanera 4 checked out the planet and got into its atmosphere. Vanera 5 followed with upgrades to collect better readings. These probes could take Venus's extreme heat, pressure, and radiation. By the mid-70s, the program was even more advanced. Every part of the Vanera design was being improved. With each good mission, the USSR was getting a better understanding of Venus. The most well-known launch was Vanera 7, which was the first probe to send data from the surface of another planet. The Soviets already knew about the planet's extreme conditions, and now they were recording its audio. In the 80s, the Vanera program was at its best, tech-wise with Vanera 13, which took the first color photos of Venus. Vanera 14 was also sent to collect similar data. Since the Soviet Union was one of the first countries to really explore Venus, Roscosmos, Russia's current space agency, is showing interest in Venus missions again. A joint project with NASA is being planned for the late 2020s or early 2030s. This mission will use new tools to study the atmosphere and geology of Venus. The goal is to find signs of life, past or present. The mission will include an orbiter, a lander, and maybe an inflatable probe to study the thick clouds more closely. The Vanera missions are important for more than just science or politics. These missions show how smart humans are and how much they want to find stuff out. They came up with new ways to use robots for climate and terrain study, which set the stage for planetary science. These missions gave us key details about Venus's nasty climate, including crushing pressure, extreme temperatures, and an atmosphere full of carbon dioxide and sulfuric acid. Advances in heat shield tech, communication, and landing gear helped later missions to places like Mars and beyond. Even now, the ideas that came from the Vanera program helped shape aerospace engineering. These missions also mattered socially and politically. Each Vanera launch was a way to show off technology and compete with other countries. When Vanera 7 landed in 1970 and sent data from Venus's surface, it was a huge win that showed the USSR could handle extreme conditions. The probes also had cameras that took the first close-up photos of Venus's surface. These photos showed rocky landscapes with volcanoes, which helped scientists understand how the planet changed. Missions like Vanera 13 and 14 kept this going, giving us a better understanding of Venus's surface and minerals. Of course, the Vanera program had its problems. Several missions didn't reach Venus or had system failures that stopped data from being sent. The rough conditions, with temperatures over 450 degrees Celsius and clouds of sulfuric acid, made it hard to keep the spacecraft working. Still, the Soviet scientists didn't give up, and their work continues today. Since space agencies, including NASA, are getting ready for future Venus trips. One such project is the proposed Vityaz mission, which is a joint venture between Roscosmos and NASA. Vityaz will build on the tech and science of the Vanera missions and study Venus more completely than ever. It will explore the atmosphere, geology, and chances for life. As we look forward to the next part of Venus exploration, it's important to think about the Soviet scientists who dared to reach out to a planet that people thought was too nasty to matter. Their work made all later Venus missions possible.